So I'd like to welcome you to the first Ranieri, Ranieri Agency podcast, and could be the last depending on how today goes. We thought this would be a great time to start up, as obviously there is a lot of uncertainty out there at the moment with COVID-19, and we thought we'd run a series of these addressing concerns and theories we've been hearing in the CE and gaming industry. The first concern I wanted to address is um, just what's going on in the CE industry at the moment from a sales point of view. We've heard a lot of people talking about the fact that Amazon is not, Amazon is not stocking CE product anymore. What's the impact of that on our partners and colleagues, brands that we work for? Um, and just really just sort of tried to get to the bottom of what the, the truth of this really is. So I wanted to uh, bring some people into these podcasts that I know have an enormous amount of experience in the industry. And I'm uh, very pleased today to welcome um, Warren Hudson, uh, who is a very good pal of mine from the industry, but also uh, currently the VP of International Sales at Sphero. Um, and also the founder of, a, of an agency called Unlock Amir, which is an organization which helps bring brands to market in Europe and the Asian Pacific. So, um, Warren, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. <clears throat> Appreciate it. It's unfortunate we're not doing this in person over a beer, but hey. You heard my question earlier. Um, you know, what we really want to sort of gather from you today is um, just kind of really... At the moment, what's going on with brands and what are their biggest concerns right now? And you may even want to tell us which brands you're sort of representing as well at the moment. So I'm uh, primarily focused on a brand called Sphero, who make uh, app-connected robots that are tons of fun but give kids uh, an introduction to coding and programming. We, uh, we became pretty well known for a license deal that we did with Disney and a product called BB-8 that we produced. So <clears throat> that was our... Uh, that was our uh, our golden bullet, um, but we also have a fantastic uh, educational business. We're in 40,000 schools globally and all that kind of good stuff. Um, separate to that, I am the founder of Unlock Me, which works with a, a number of um, carefully selected brands to help them grow in Europe, the Middle East, and more recently, Asia, where we've opened an office as well. Um, so I think you'd, you'd asked about the the concerns of brands there Pietro in the first part so um yeah it's I mean it's tough it's unprecedented these are, are uncharted waters um obviously uh we have a virus that's spreading at a pretty fast rate and before I get into the impact on the market and retail and consumer electronics I'd like to say you know to all of our partners and and friends um to anyone that's that's uh had a brush with coronavirus, you know, I wish you a full and fast recovery to anyone that hasn't. Let's hope it stays that way. Uh, and I, I wish you all well. Um, so anyway, back to the, the business side of things. Um, the concerns from brands are, you know, just, just what is happening out there, right? We've got, we've got shops that are cl closing. We've got uh, consumers who are staying at home. We've got a reduced level of consumer confidence, um, we, we've got additional demand for the essential products. So, you know, toilet rolls, hand sanitizers, yeah. food, especially that that has long life. That's all, mm -hmm. that's all in high demand. But we're, we're definitely seeing that the that, that luxury items, the stuff that people don't need, is, is impacted with, uh, with reduced demand. And I think that's a consequence of, um, of you know, consumer confidence dropping, people are concerned whether they're going to have a job to go to, you know, especially and immediately those that work within um, hospitality sectors, restaurants, bars, hotels, all that kind of stuff. Um, so, yeah, I think the, you know, the implication for brands could be significant. I think all of those brands right now uh, who have been working with product forecasts for some time and will have been predicting revenue flowing into the business will have seen disruption there and I think they're very quickly having to work out what that disruption looks like what will revenue look like in the coming weeks and months and and how can they better predict their cash flow and what's going to happen with inventory because we're definitely going to see some some overstock positions um, and I think it all it all boils down to you know how long is this going to last for and and how do I get through this if you look at where we were before the virus, um, you know, it was a pretty good outlook and, and the indicators for the long term were, were quite positive. 
and fundamentally nothing has changed. It's not like the, the 2008 situation where you've got um, a broken banking system. You know, businesses haven't become yeah. bad businesses overnight. Brands don't have bad products overnight. Yeah, and I think is where, this is where I was. Um, I just can't make my mind up on this. Um, so you're right. In 2008, you know, there was a big, um, you know, recession, and obviously I was. You know, you were, you and I were both in consumer electronics at the time, and at the time we shared some clients as well. Um, but one thing that you know, across the board, obviously sales were down, and you know, <coughs> purchased like houses and cars and all that kind of stuff. But the consumer electronics industry still seemed to do considering reasonably okay because I think people were at home and they weren't buying the big things. So they were still buying, you know, like the cases and the headphones and the kind of smaller items, which kind of made them feel good, you know, day to day. And I did wonder, you know, within this sort of current situation, you know, it's not like we're hit by a recession well yet, um, but with people being at home, will that draw their attention to more online purchasing? And maybe sales could actually come, you know, can certainly in consumer electronics and gaming do end up doing well out of this. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think we, I mean, we've, we were already seeing some trends from bricks and mortar towards online. We've been seeing that for years now, right? And Amazon's been a, a key player. <clears throat> I think in recent weeks that has accelerated. Um, and, and I think that, uh, you know, that, that transition and that demand online will continue to, to grow. Um, the question is, can, can the online infrastructures support the level of demand that will be, that we're going through them? And that's, that's the big unknown at the moment. But, but I think, you know, fundamentally in 2008, we had a broken banking system. Now we've got, um, we've got a downturn as a fear of the unknown rather than, a fundamentally broken foundation. And I, I expect, and I've been re reading a bit about this and talking to lots of partners, but I'm expecting some sort of V-shape here where the recovery could happen as quickly as the downturn. You know, I don't know whether we've got to the bottom of the downturn or, or whether it's an immediate spike back up, but I don't think it's a long downturn. And then I do think it's a, it's a big increase back up. So I think as long as brands can get through this period, the opportunity on the other side will be absolutely fantastic. So, yeah. well, um, you know, I, I just wish everyone good health and to, to fight through. Yeah. So you mentioned um, about the, the infrastructure not being able to cope potentially with a kind of all the online sales. And it, it kind of led me to one of my questions that, I, well, a theory that I've been hearing that um, Amazon aren't stocking and they're prioritizing you know, the kind of COVID related purchases like hands, um, hand sanitizer, <laughs> tissue. I mean, I think my German colleague said that some pasta was online on Amazon for 36 euros for a 500 gram bag, which he found staggering. Um, so, I mean, is, is that true? Are, are we going to see a downturn on Amazon in consumer electronics products because Amazon themselves are prioritizing um, COVID related purchases or is that sort <clears> of... <throat> So, so it's a it's a good question, and we're, you know, we're uh, we're living sort of day by day with new information at the moment. The um, as as most people know, there are two ways to sell with Amazon. You can either sell to Amazon as a retailer through Vendor Central, or you can sell through Amazon as a platform um, via Seller Central. And there are advantages to disadvantages of both. Uh, you've heard correct that Amazon as a retailer through their vendor central platform are prioritizing the the urgent items and have communicated that um, that they'll be reducing or or stopping intake of um, consumer electronics products as, as an example. So that's concerning. Um, any brand that has a strategy to sell to Amazon as a retailer, and does not have a uh, seller central uh, third party platform strategy needs to address that immediately because they could continue servicing demand while uh, managing the whole end to end experience and the customer through mm -hmm. seller central. They can then use Amazon's logistics network, which is uh, FBA, or they can um, fulfill via their own or any third party delivery network as well. Um, so that there's there's ways to to continue 
Uh, and I would urge anyone that hasn't got a seller central strategy in place right now to, to think about that quite seriously at the moment, because <clears throat> we don't know for how long Amazon are going to have this <clears throat> view that they're not going to bring in essential, non-essential items. Yeah. And I'm guessing um, you know, <clears throat> whilst we're in the sort of, you know, the grips of um, COVID-19 and we're still, you know, countries are still shutting down. I mean, I know the UK is obviously <clears throat> getting ready for the worst at the moment. Um, certainly over the last few days, <clears throat> interestingly becoming more, um, you know, more locked down, you know, people are going to be kind of bulk buying this stuff. But I guess as soon as, you know, the grip starts to get released on these different countries, you know, Amazon should start to release more shelf space again. And hopefully everything starts to get back to normal quicker. <clears throat> I couldn't agree more. I think it comes back to that idea that we could <clears throat> we could be experiencing a bit of a V-shape here. It's a, you know, it's a really sudden, significant, huge downturn. Um, but as, you, you know, you look at countries like China, who've taken some immediate action. Yesterday was the first day that they did not have a single case diagnosed. Um, you know, the lockdown, it's been painful for a short period, but I would anticipate now that, that things could get back on track quickly. There are already, <clears throat> you know, there's, there's a lot of good news coming through with regard to a vaccine. And I think we're, you know, we're on this planet for quite a while and we'll look back at this period as a short and uncomfortable period, but we just have to think about you know, when it's going to change, we need to be prepared for to, to capitalize when when things start to upturn. And I do think it will be significant as well. Yeah. So talking about, um, you know, brands planning for, for COVID and kind of the effects that could happen to them through the year. Is there anything that you think that, um, you know, they brands should be thinking about? They may have pro a lot of product out in retail at the moment. They may have, you know, uh, they would be stocking lots of things somewhere. Is there something that they can be doing, you know, or planning ahead for? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think it links, links back. Most brands are going to be, are going to be concerned with their, with their cash position and their cash flow, which, which will have been based on, you know, forecasted demand and that demand may have just dropped off. So I think there's a lot of brands out there that are going to be experiencing overstock issues. Um, there may be retailers that have returned products to distributors there may be some difficult discussions going on between retailers or distributors with brands about payments as a consequence of this. Um, so I think retailers, not retailers, brands, sorry, very quickly need to get their head around, you know, if they have a stock problem, face up to it, deal with it really quickly. Um, the answer is probably to, to not take stock from Europe and ship it back to the Far East and then try and solve the problem. It's solving the problem um, hit here within the market and there will still be opportunities. There's still people that you can speak to about taking positions on stock and they'll take a long-term view on this. So there are ways where you can um, turn inventory into cash relatively quickly. And I think that's going to be going to be really, really important. Um, and then I think this is probably a period Pietro where, where brands should, um, take a little bit of time to reflect. I mean, being a successful brand, um, I liken it often to, to cooking a very complicated, nice meal in a restaurant. There are lots and lots of ingredients. And if you miss an ingredient and it's not a key one, then you probably still have a meal, but it may not taste the same. If you miss two or three ingredients or a key ingredient, you may not have a meal. So I think now's a good time to just reflect on everything. You know, we'll, we'll, when we're sort of chatting to brands, we're thinking about not just product, but packaging, compliance, certifications, uh, their logistics strategy, their their roadmap, their retail execution. We're talking about price lists because there's been a bunch of currency fluctuations lately and, and, and VAT and recommended retail prices. So there's all these things to consider. And then, of course, the one key area where you and your business are involved is around around marketing and I think it's it's critical especially if you've got a great product that you have a a plan to not only put it out there but tell consumers that it exists your brand your product and make sure that there's pull through from the channel yeah I 100% agree and I funnily enough I've been writing um a LinkedIn post about this but I do believe that um that there are going to be some brands out there where you know there are going to be some very quick wins available I mean the people that um you know that have a, a good marketing function in place and can switch 
you know, their, you know, their sort of digital comm strategy on quickly, um, you know, they could really profit out of this situation. You know, people aren't cool. going to face-to-face bricks and mortar type, um, you know, shopping malls, events, festivals. They're just not happening at the moment. And, um, you know, if you can switch that, switch your spend to digital, you know, you can make some very quick wins because I guarantee that a lot of brands are going to be doing it. Um, but it's a bit, again, like you're saying with your restaurant analogy, it's trying to find the right, mix of digital marketing to to meet to meet the situation because there is a lot of you know brands will be trying lots of different things they can very quickly spend a lot of money and paid for example on social but you know if you haven't got the kind of e-commerce strategy in place you know you need to push it somewhere so you know and that again sort of lends itself to what you guys do as well where you know optimizing amazon pages making sure that you know when they when traffic is pushed to you know your your online shop you know people convert that sale so yeah and and i would add add to that you know very very broadly speaking we're we're seeing like two types of approaches at the moment i think the first is you know hey this is this is really bad let's let's pull back on on everything until we understand uh what it looks like and um and and then the other side is the brands that are looking at it saying okay this is a downturn there's already some evidence that suggests that it might not be for a long period and there's a lot of analysts that are predicting it could bounce back very quickly when things start to turn back up um and so i think the brands that fall into the latter category you know they're staying involved they're having conversations with with buyers and these buyers you know they're not ready to write off the year as you would expect they know that there's going to be you know a, a couple of couple of three months worth of pain, perhaps longer, but, you know, we still have the second half of the year to come. Q3 and Q4 is when a majority of the business is done. We can still, we can still plan for that. We can still, you know, anticipate an upturn and be prepared for when everything, when everything starts to happen. And I think you have to be around the table now to have those conversations, obviously around the virtual table and not around the real table. Between you and I and not people listening to this podcast, have you seen, from a sales point of view, and you don't have, obviously have to mention brands, but you know, have you seen any significant drops, rises? I mean, anything kind of of note? I mean, I, w- I would expect. I mean, I suppose we would all expect to see a drop in sales at the moment. But is that what you've been experiencing? You know, online, or is it just kind of business as usual? Or, um, I mean, on online, we're probably seeing seeing demand increase and we're seeing brands that have to change their tactics in order to capitalize on the current moment um so i think that's really important demand is dropping off in retail retail stores are uh, closing we have seen distributors anticipate a period in in china where supply might be reduced so they've taken uh relatively um good stock positions certainly on on key lines and key products so i don't think it's it's bitten properly yet but it it may well do in the coming weeks um i have a friend that works in the in the laptop and uh sector and he was saying that he had uh, on one day last week he sold more laptops than he'd sold in q1 or no sorry in january and february altogether um uh, so, so I've, sorry home workers <laughs> exactly exactly so i think there are certain segments that that will perform very well um obviously you've got a whole bunch of parents out there that just became teachers at home for a period when their kids are going to be off school so you know if, if they can find tech that's going to keep their kids you know entertained engaged give them fun and even tech that's going to give them some some valuable learning skills on top of that as well. If they can learn a new skill while they're off school, then what then what a great challenge that is. So, you know, I think I think a brand like Sphero is really well positioned to um, to, to give parents a bit of peace and quiet in a, in an otherwise hectic household. Yeah, no, I'm I'm fully experiencing that at the moment. We've, we've got two young children here, and it's our first day with us all together in one house. And it's uh, yeah, it's been interesting. I'm surprised no one's burst through the door yet. Um, we need to make sure we get some sphere into your hands so you can teach them how to code. Yeah, I'd, well, I'd appreciate that. Um, <laughs> so, you know, for brands moving forward, I mean, is there any 
tips you'd give them to kind of well a prepare for this current period prepare for i mean the upturn as well i mean eventually things are gonna you know pop back into place like saying i mean china's starting to get back to normal um i think uh the italy's still terrible but it's slowing down i mean at some point it's going to start to come back and i think you know hopefully it's going to be quicker than we all expect but you know is there anything that people should be doing to prepare for q3 q4 yeah, I, I think, um, and and some of this is a summary of what I've what what I've said, but some not. So, I I definitely think brands right now should be uh, should be taking a look at stock positions, their own and through their channel partners, and where there are obvious problems. I think they should face up to them, and I think they should address them immediately because that could just get um, more painful as as time goes by. Right, so. So I think that's a high priority and facing up to that, managing it will help their cash flow and give them a great chance of um, of riding the, uh, of getting through the storm. Um, and then, you know, coming back to that meal that every brand needs to cook, you know, j- just drilling into all of those ingredients and making sure that everything is in, in place. I mean, you can't go from being a, a startup or scale up brand to being a world class brand in in no time that takes uh, that takes some money it takes some patience it takes some time it takes a lot of experience and I think it's a great opportunity now to be doing a bit of housekeeping making sure that you know you've got all of your ducks in a row and that you're building your brand on a world class foundation that will give you a great position for for q3 q4 and then moving into into next year as well so i think there's there's a lot that can be done you know there's in this business building a successful brand is hard work it's very easy to make a mistake and those mistakes can end up being very costly so i think you know going through that in detail now uh while there might be some other pressures off is is probably a good discipline in order to prepare you for the future yeah i mean it's interesting with our own business um at ranieri you know, we've managed to um you know switch from being office based to being um remote very easily um but um you know but what we, the one thing that we found a struggle quite honestly um is that uh obviously when we're at work, we talk to each other in the office and we go to a meeting room and we go to, you know, a kind of communal area where we can just chat and have a meeting. But now everybody's on conference calls all the time. So it's kind of quite hard to actually get time with someone because they're always on conference calls. And it's also overloading our conference call system. I mean, we all use um, Zoom here. We've had one account for however many years now. Suddenly, you know, I think we need about 50 accounts so that everyone can have a conference call. So, was Zoom was Zoom paying you to name drop? Uh, well, they should be. I might. I might uh, hashtag them. <laughs> Absolutely worth doing. No, I, and you know, on on my side, I mean, we we've been doing a ton of travelling, uh, and we're we're pausing the travel, of course. Um, we're doing far more video calls. I actually, I'm finding it much more efficient. To be honest with you, there's no there's no wasted time during your day, and you know, there's still plenty of people that that are that are ready and willing to talk to you um because like i said earlier while it's tough right now it won't be tough forever so planning for the future remains very important yeah and it's, it's also you know i think you and i are both um very um you know we like to do business the kind of face-to-face way and kind of network with people and i found that um you know suddenly all these people that um haven't spoken to for years you know i'm having conference calls with them you know all the time i think that everyone's in the same position they're at home you know already after you know three days or four days everyone's dying to get back to work and they're starting to go through their roller deck and just you know have a quick chat with such and such what's he up to i'll have a chat with this guy you know it's kind of if anything, I think, you know, if you, um, you know, as long as you're dedicated and you get on with work and adapt to home working, you can come out of this really strong. So, so um, just last question, really. So moving forward, I mean, are there any uh, um, uh, triggers for you to, to think, well, actually, you know, we're on the back, we're on an upturn again. I mean, we'll, because uh, I know, you know, there may be a position where, you know, we come out of the sort of social isolation bit as a as a country but i've been reading some reports where apparently they may stagger it and you kind of you come out of social isolation 
you know, but there's just more sort of controlling, you know, the, um, the flow of patients into the NHS. So you come out, you go back in, you come out. Um, and there's different theories around this, but will there be any sort of um, indicators for you to sort of say, right, you know, we're out of this now, you know, business is back to normal in terms of consumer electronics and sales, or do you think sure. that's going to be there? <clears throat> yeah. Well, I mean, I'd be the first to say that, that, this probably is not my area of expertise. I, uh, uh, ha however, that said, from everything I'm seeing and reading, um, you know, a vaccine would be a great start because I think that would give a lot of confidence, right? That's the obvious one. Um, I think that they're very close now um, to tests that will let people know whether they've had it and obviously had milder symptoms and recovered from it without even knowing that. And I don't know about you, but if I knew that I had had it and therefore was far less likely to get it again, I would uh, I, I would be a more confident person. I'd probably be going out more. I'd probably return to a degree of normality. So I think you know, if either of those two things can can happen, uh, then then I think we're going to see that V shape that I mentioned earlier on. So. Um, yeah, I think I think that would be two two key things. I think retailers opening their doors again is is obviously another uh, indicator. People going back to work. Um, I don't know how long that's gonna. Hey, Gabriel. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it will meet the world. Can you, uh, can you print out what I sent you? Yes, later. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> the joy, the joys of home working. That's real life stuff there. <laughs> Okay, five minutes. Thanks. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> um, yeah, I was just saying, you know, pe people going back to work and 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 all, all those sorts of things. The markets starting to recover. Obviously, there's financial stimuluses that have been that have been announced. Um, so yeah, I think I think there's a few factors that would have a big impact, and I just think being prepared for that moment when. The lights get switched back on is is critical and whoever is there at that moment with relevant product and and service offerings will um will, will win yeah cool well look, i um i really appreciate your time i know you're really busy um especially everyone's really busy at the moment with what's going on but um thank you for your time and um yeah i look forward to shaking your hand again one day <laughs> drinking a beer together it's always good to chat with you thanks for uh, thanks for having me and letting me be uh, be on your podcast, Pietro. I appreciate it. You're most welcome. Thank you very much. Cheers.